We've got a little bit of a video that I'm going to go ahead and play, and then I'll say just a few things, and we want to get right to the message tonight. But I know before I even play the video, I know that I do have one thing that I'm going to make sure that we give to all the youth, that I know the youth pastors that are here. Um, you all are, know what a QR, call, a QR code is, is that right there? And um, But I'm going to hand out something to all the teens tonight, and I want you to take one of these, and this is going to be a, probably even a little bit more of effective promotional uh, for our camp, but I want you to take this. And um, certainly if you're serious about, maybe even just you wanted more information about Gospel Camp, you can take this, you can scan this QR code, and uh, you can have it. In fact, I'm going to give these to the youth pastors now, because I'm going to forget. You don't have to pass them out now. You can just take one of these youth boys, uh, and see this. And, uh, but we want to make sure that every teenager gets those, and so forth. But if we can play the video, and then following the video, I'll say a little bit more about the camp, some specifics, and then we want to get to the message tonight. Unveiling his plan and prophecy is unfolding. These last days are full of challenges and opportunities. God is working and he is searching for committed young men and women who are focused on him and who are ready for his cause. My name is Aaron Counts and I attended the basketball camp. The spirit here is magnificent. The spirit here is you can tell that the Lord has his hand on this place and he's really moving, you know, and you can tell that the spirit of the camp and you can tell that the the heart of the speakers that speak in this camp, you can tell that they really have a heart for young people and that they really care about you. My name is Alexa Lopez and I this week I attended the missions camp. Seeing that so many youth sing to the Lord with honest hearts, it's amazing seeing how many have joined together and just praise the Lord. Every question is needed, like right, especially now, there's gonna be a session for that. And it's gonna help you to um, learn more and apply that when you come back. Joshua Camps is unlike any other camp that I've ever been to. The other camps that I've been to, they don't really focus on your gift as much as Joshua Camps. And Joshua Camps just brings, brings out what God intended you to be. You know, Joshua Camps has already been very influential in our church as we've been coming for several years. We've had teenagers get saved here and just make great decisions for the cause of Christ. And even this year, hearing some of the decisions that the teenagers have made and just so thankful for Joshua Camps and the preaching of God's word that they get to hear every day. And also for the work that they do for the specialty areas, the talents that these teenagers have to help them there and just the decisions that these teens have made that I know will impact our church family, our community, and I'm praying that will impact this world for the gospel. Join us this summer for Joshua Camps, where you can discover your God and develop your gifts.
discover who God is, but also to develop the gifts. And I believe that every young person, God has given you a gift. Now, once you get saved, I believe the Holy Spirit helps to reveal what that gift is. But, you know, no matter who you are, young person, you know, this camp is for you. I mean, what a great opportunity. Um, this year's theme, um, as was mentioned, is uh, it's more of a prophetic theme, but ready for his cause. Every year, that's been really my, 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 my job is really to kind of come up with a theme from the Word of God. And, and uh, we've got some tremendous speakers this year that we're looking forward to having. Some that, um, of course, uh, we youth pastors are familiar with, but I know Dr. Jim Shetler, uh, he's one of our featured speakers. Dr. Uh, Gibbs, he's with our Christian Law Association, Dr. John Guest. And also his son, Evangelist Eric Guest, will be with us as well. And so they'll split the weeks up. Uh, one thing that I that we uh, certainly have been blessed with is the affordability of camp. In every camp, it's difficult, but um, the Lord's been good. But um, right now, just for one camper, the only cost for that is only one ninety nine. And uh, we really, I think, most across the, with most camps across the nation today, of course, are much higher. Uh, if you bring ten or more from your youth group, pastor, that cost is only one hundred and seventy dollars. And so 170 per camper. And so we've been able to lower the cost, lower the cost. Uh, we're a seven-day resident camp. That means um, you're there for seven days on that campus. And a lot of camps today, maybe they, you know, they're about four days and so forth there. But we've decided to kind of stretch it out a little bit and so forth. But anyway, so I'll be at the back at the very end tonight to answer uh, questions that I know that maybe I didn't get a chance to answer from you. Um, but I trust that you'll consider Joshua Camp. Well, I know it's been a highlight, and again, Brother Trujillo, I just want to say this. I know the light's, the light's a little bit, uh, I think, a little bit longer for, for some of the church family tonight. I know our schedules got pushed back, and I don't want to take a lot of time, but I think that, you know, we would have met in vain tonight if we don't open up the Word of God. And young person, I just wish I could have had a little bit of what you've had. And I went to youth group. I, you know, I was saved uh, uh, from a church not too far from here, actually, on the Monterey Peninsula. But I, I wish I would have had a little bit of what you have tonight. And so I want to just share some things from my heart tonight. You're going to have to kind of listen strong. If you don't have a Bible, I know a lot of you have Bibles on phones and so forth. But once you take your Bible and go to Philippians chapter number four, if you would tonight. Philippians chapter number four. And I want to look at just one verse that's going to really uh, kind of aim at what I want to talk with you about tonight. Philippians chapter four. And I love the book of Philippians because as Paul is writing to these, I believe, these Philippian uh, Christians, he kind of outlines the book of Philippians talking about, and you got to have in chapter 1, the philosophy for the Christian life. In chapter 2, he speaks about the pattern for the Christian life. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I like chapter 3. He speaks about the prize for the Christian life. He says that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, or rather, I press toward the mark for the prize, rather, in chapter 3. And in chapter 4, he speaks about this, get this, the power for the Christian life. And that's when he says that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I want you to look at one verse tonight, and we're going to get right into this message I'm going to share with you tonight. Are you all there? Let me get your eyes this way, and we need to get going in joy. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, follow with me. The Bible says this. Finally, brethren, What's the things that are true? What's the things that are honest? What's the things that are just? What's the things that are pure? What's the things that are lovely? What's the things of a, that are of a good report? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, say the last four words with me. Think on these things. You know, young people tonight, as, I, as I'm sure maybe some of you, if not all of you have, in the last 22 days, I've been made aware that there's been a war that's occurring, obviously, not on us, I think, but across, you know, uh, not too far from where we are. The last 22 days, we see the imagery that, of course, uh, that's being displayed with Russia and Ukraine, just the war that's going on back and forth. And I don't know anyone personally there. I know that we've got some missionaries from our church, maybe some from this church whom we support. And yet, um, we see that there's a real war that's, that, that's taken place there. Do you want me to use the lapel? Is that good? Can you hear me there? All right, good. And I'll stay kind of close, and I'll lift my voice if I stray away there. But there's a warfare that's taken place that we see on our televisions. But, you know, young people tonight, as I look out across this room, and adults included, there's a war that's taken place right in this church house. And you know where that war is? You know where the battleground is tonight? It's right here. It's, it's, the, it's the mind. And, you know, Paul, as he's writing this verse here, and I like the last four words that he mentions, he says, think on these things. And I'm convinced tonight that, you know, far too often we have allowed our minds, our, 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 our minds here, just to be a little bit open. Have you ever left something open that you, you meant to close? 
Sometimes I tell my kids, my son, they, one, my, my youngest is, is 18 years old, and he has a habit sometimes of just leaving one of the doors, the garage door open, and that's kind of unnervy for where we live. And, you know, if we're not careful, we can leave things open. But I want to say far too often, you and I, what we leave unattended, young person, is our, is our mind. And I want to speak to you tonight on a message that I remember, that I think I preached this years ago. And it's maybe a message you've not maybe heard maybe quite like this before. But I want to talk about really two aspects, that are, uh, two, two major things tonight. Number one, this thing that's called reality and also this thing that's called fantasy. Reality versus fantasy. I know years ago, many, many years ago, I remember when I was in grade school, some of the adults in this room may remember this, but there was a television program that was pretty famous on TV. It was called Fantasy Island. How many of you remember that? It was kind of a popular TV program that ran, and, and really the whole purpose of this, this program is, was that these, it was make-believe, obviously, but these people would travel from afar. They would come to this island, and whatever dreams that they had, whatever they wanted to see true nine times out of ten, it took place on that little fantasy island. I mean, people would travel to this make-believe island, and some of them wanted to maybe to, 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 to become rich, or maybe they wanted to, uh, you know, to get married or what have you. And would you know on this island, when these people landed on this island, it was as if things just kind of came to pass. I mean, it was a fantasy. It was make-believe. Young person, I want you to understand tonight that for the young person that's five years old, six years old, seven, eight years old, did you know that fantasy is, is pretty much pretty common? I mean, it's, it's pretty natural for a young person. But can I say tonight, as you get in your teen years, as you get into your, uh, as you become 13 and 15 and 20 and 30 and 40 and 50, did you know that your imagination, did you know that your fantasy, that's a big deal? I've also been heard, I, I rather, I've been told that, you know, the Western culture where we live, we're in, the, we're in Western civilization. Did you know that we're the last culture to graduate from adolescence? That means that, you know what, we're the last group of, uh, can I say, civilized individuals to grow up. And young person, can I say tonight that it's, it's normal for a young person, and I've, I've got two kids, but, you know, they're, they're, they're at adult age, if you would. And I tell you what, they cannot afford, we cannot afford to let our fantasies and our imaginations just to be open up to the things of this world. You know, as I look at this tonight, and even as Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, he says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Young person tonight, can I say that it's time to grow up? It's time to take care of, I believe, a gift that God has given you? Can I ask you this question tonight? We need to quickly bow for prayer, but where has your imagination, where has your fantasies taken you tonight? After we pray tonight, I want to talk about really three important principles, three points tonight that I think that we need to really give attention to. First of all, I want to talk about, number one here, what's called the conduit to our fantasies. Did you know that our fantasies all begin somewhere? Then number two, we want to really kind of talk about, can I say here, really the conflict with our fantasies. What causes you and I to just, our, our imagination and our fantasies to take us, you know, places they have no business going. But then thirdly, I want to talk to you about this tonight, how we need to constrain our fantasies. If you, and I believe tonight the reason why you're here is because you got, uh, no doubt, parents and even a youth pastor and a pastor that love you. But I'd have to say tonight, the reason why you're here is that you don't want to, you, you want to you wanna grow in the things of God. And lastly, tonight, we're going to have to learn how to bring our thoughts under control. Does that make sense tonight? Would you pray with me? We're going to get right into the message tonight. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, tonight what we've been able to experience. And, and uh, Lord, it's just been a joy just to be around, Lord, um, the church family and, Lord, the young people tonight. And, Lord, thank you for the games. I thank you for the video that we've been able to share but, Lord, I tell you, for the last several weeks, even as I talk with Brother Trujillo, Lord, I know my heart's been burdened. And, and Lord, uh, I would be wrong, Father. We would be wasting time if we didn't open up the Word of God and if we did not address, Lord, issues. And I believe this is something that you've put on my heart. But we would be wrong if we didn't open up the Word of God. I pray that tonight, Lord, that you would just banish the devil, Father. I pray that every uh, wicked thought, I, I think of things that maybe we're thinking of right now that we should not. Would you please just... 
Bring that under arrest, Lord. May these young people, Father, have a, uh, a listening ear. And Lord, they're not responding to me, but Lord, they're responding to the word of God. And Lord, if there's a young person that sits in this church tonight that does not know Jesus Christ as his Savior, her Savior, Lord, that's the most important aspect. Lord, that's the beginning point. This message won't make sense if they don't know Jesus as their Savior because that's the foundation. So Lord, I pray that you would empty me of myself. I pray, Father, that you would just help me to speak only those things as I should. Lord, I pray for my family as I'm away from them tonight. Lord, would you put your hands upon my wife and Lord, my children, my mother that stays with us. Lord, please watch over them. And so, Lord, speak to us now. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, tonight as we begin uh, looking at, I believe, this very all-important message, you know, I want to begin tonight talking about the conduit, the conduit to our fantasies. You all have seen a hose pipe. You've seen maybe a piece of maybe plastic or metal, but inside of that maybe there's wire, maybe there's water that maybe flows through that. A conduit is no more than just what something passes through. It's like a connection. And folks, can I say tonight, young person, let me get you to look this way, but you know your mind tonight is no more than just a gateway for information or for things to come inside. When you stop and think about, I believe, one of the great gifts that God has given to you and I, young person, it is the mind. I believe the minds, it all begins with the minds. Listen to this. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5 says this, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing the gain in godliness from such, uh, such is godliness. And yet, you know, when you think about the mind tonight, whether you believe it or not, young person, your mind, it's a big deal. What you think about and where you allow your mind to go, did you know that's a big deal for the Lord? And by the way, it's, it's a tragic, it's a tragedy today how the world today wants to humanize uh, they they want to humanize animals. I know where I live in Lancaster. I don't know if it maybe it's like where you is, but I mean I see this quite often. I have begin to see people as I've walked down the street, brother Trujillo. I've seen people walking pets, not on the leash, but they put them now inside of like baby carriages and they push them along. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I mean it's amazing how they exalt animals today, as if animals can you know think and they can relate like human beings. But can I say this tonight? That, you know, the human mind, extra, you know, I, I believe has extraordinary, can I say, gifts. Nothing else can be quite like what we have. I think about the ability to reason and to rationalize and to choose and, and to have humor and so forth. Someone once said this. Ex experts estimate anywhere from 60 to 80,000 thoughts are thought daily with individuals. That means you and I think anywhere from 60 to 80,000 thoughts a given day. Other experts say that, you know, anywhere from 25 to uh, 33,000 thoughts per, uh, per hour. An average thought lasts, get this, three to six seconds. Did you know, I don't know how many thoughts maybe you just thought about in the last maybe minute or two, but think about it. I mean, thoughts just go from one thing to the next. Some of you are thinking about that hamburger you want to finish that you didn't eat from Jack in the Box last night. Some of you are thinking about, you know, uh, I mean, your thoughts are just kind of racing. My thoughts kind of do the same thing. And yet, can I say that it all begins with the mind? Now, let me say, having a mind is not sinful, okay? That's not what I'm saying. God created that. But I'd have to say that next, you know, our minds are great influencers. You know, when you stop and think about music, there are many today that would say, you know what? Music does not affect you and I. Did you know that's one of the greatest lies I've heard? Can I say that music, you know, is, is not, definitely not music, it's not neutral, or amoral, however you want to say that, music influences you. I could play some sad music on that, on that piano tonight, and I wouldn't do that because I don't know how to play. But if I played some sad music tonight, you know, it would begin to set the mood tonight. If I played some happy music and so forth there, I mean, it, it would kind of get to be, because you know what, what that does? It stimulates you. And so I want you to understand tonight that I tell you the mind is a great influencer, but get this here, your mind obviously produces the imagination. Now, can I ask you tonight, when you stop and think about fantasies, it, it, I have to say that imagination is a key to it. I want you to understand this statement, and I really believe this is true, certainly biblical. But one of the greatest, I believe one of the most godlike things that you and I can do, one of the great gifts, but one of the most godlike things that you and I can do, get this, we can create things out of nothing. We can imagine things. You know, when I was young, I was a, uh, 
I mean, I imagine I was a 49er uh, athlete, for a football player. I mean, I won every game, never lost. Because that, that was my imagination. And so I just say simply tonight, get this, you know, the conduit of our fantasies. Guess what? It's, it's all, it all starts in this thing here. But I want to quickly talk about this next area that I want to really get your ears to. It's the conflict of these fantasies. Now, listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses, uh, verse 10 through 5. It says this. Or 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. That word imagination, get this, means conclusions or solutions. Young person tonight, did you know that our minds, our imaginations, it's very quickly for you and I to come to conclusions that are not based upon the truth of the word of God. And I want, as I talk about this matter of fantasy, what are some of these areas do we fantasize in? As believers in Christ, as, as young people desiring to live for God, uh, having an unrestrained mind, where do our fantasies sometimes lead us? I want you to listen to some of these areas. You know, number one where I believe that our fantasies have taken maybe a lot of us is this thing that's called sensuality. Young person tonight, you know, sensuality is no more than what, what it's, it's just lust. That's what that is. To me, it's an affection that I believe that certainly that is not of God. But when we begin to fantasize over relationships or situations that I tell you that are, anti, that are, that are not of God, that leads us down a path that I tell you we have no business going. Did you know that if we're not careful, we, there are those that we, we, we've allowed ourselves just to kind of get our minds wrapped around this thing that's called lust. Whether it's men, young men with ladies or ladies with men or even both today. And yet, can I say that there are many today that have allowed their fantasization to take them down this thing that's called sensuality. I want you to listen to the second thing here quickly here. Number two, I just put this, situations in life. You know, there, have you met somebody that just worries and worries and worries? I've met people today that worry so much where they create scenarios in their minds and they don't even, it doesn't even come true. And, you know, it's, it's not just adults. There are young people tonight that begin to fantasize over bad things happening. They just worry over everything that takes place. You know, someone once said this, that over 80% of the things that we worry about don't ever occur. And the 10% of the things that do, God's got an answer for that. And, and yet, if we're not careful, young people tonight, did you know that we can begin, we allow our minds to take us down this thing of just fantasizing over situations in life? Listen to this third area here. Oh, this is a good one here. Satisfaction. In other words, we want to do things that, you know what, God's not given us a stamp of approval on. You know, I, I work with college students day in and day out, and it's amazing how they always have this idea that they, they're just not satisfied with what God's trying to do in their life. And they just begin in their minds, they begin fantasizing, they begin creating things, you know, and, and, and yet God's not given that stamp of approval. And young person tonight, you've got a youth pastor and a pastor that love you, and I don't know, you know, what the temperament of your youth group is. But no doubt, maybe he's talking about the will of God. He's talking about, you know, your need to just wait and, and don't jump, don't, don't be so quick and, um, you know, to make this decision or that decision. But there's a satisfaction. Some of you are just not satisfied. And shame on you. Some of you are, could be just even fantasizing having different parents. Boy, my parents are so strict. And by the way, you know, I, I often say this to parents, you know, uh, even to young people. You know, strictness doesn't, does not hurt them. It's being harsh that does. And, you know, if we're not careful, we begin to fantasize. We're just not satisfied at what God's trying to do in our life. He tells us in, um, you know, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in what sort of state that I am therewith to be content. Now, let me give you these last two. You know, if we're not careful, our minds takes us down a road of sensuality. It takes us down a road of uh, uh, the situations of life, satisfaction. Oh, let me give you the last two here quickly. There are those that fantasize when it comes to this thing that's called self-perspective. Now, get this here. I've worked with young people that say that, you know what, my life is just not worth living. Then I meet young people that say that, you know what, I'm, God, I'm, I'm God's gift of life. I mean, it's not just pride that we deal with, but we deal with those that just have this self, you know, this self-introspective look that is just not right. And let me just address the first one here. You know, there are those tonight that, you know, 
you, some of you struggle with just this thing that, you know what, I, am just, I just don't have a lot of gifts. I just cannot do a lot. Can I say that's one of the greatest lies of the devil? Young person tonight, I tell you, if God created you, I mean, he has got a will for your life that is just beyond belief. And, and if you've allowed yourself to begin to fantasize that you're not worth nothing, you know what, what you're telling the word of God is? It's not true. Because my Bible tells me that, you know, here we see in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, or rather, uh, uh, Psalms 139, verse 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. But then you got young people tonight that I tell you what, oh, yes, they fantasize that they are God's gift to this world. And, oh, be careful. I stop and think about this man that, that uh, of course, that, uh, um, of course, has become the forefront of uh, this war, of course, uh, Mr. Putin. And, and young people, can I, can I challenge you with this here? Maybe not make fun of him. Maybe we pray for his salvation. Maybe we pray for him. But I tell you what, that man has a heart of pride. He believes that, you know what, he's the superpower. And young person, if you're here tonight and you believe that I tell you what, I got it all, you know what, we're fantasizing. We're allowing our mind to take us somewhere that has no business going. But, you know, look at this last one here where sometimes if we're not careful where our minds will take us is this matter of, of course, uh, I, I wrote down the word serving here. Have you ever said you, have you ever maybe made this statement, I cannot see myself doing this? Anybody make that statement? I know I've made that statement before. Anyone, raise your hand if you've ever made that statement before. I just cannot see myself doing that. You know, I sit where you, uh, I, 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 where you sit is where I sat before. And I've heard preachers stand up and, and say, you know what, you need to surrender your life to the Lord and you need to give your all to Christ. And young person tonight, I tell you, there are some of you that maybe have made that decision. Some of you have made that decision very quietly and maybe in a youth group meeting. But, you know, there are others, and I was kind of like this. I would say, you know what, Lord, there's no way that you can use me. I don't have a lot of gifts. I mean, I played sports. I played football, you know, through high school and, and things of that nature. But, you know, at, at the end of the road, I just begin to look out and think, Lord, I mean, what can I really do? And I just made the decision, you know, at, at my senior year of, of high school, I gave my life to Christ. And I've just been amazed. I'm getting ready to turn 50 next uh, in December. And I just say, yeah, somebody's saying, Brother Wade, you look so young. Amen. Thank you, brother. And I say, I tell you what, I, I, I don't regret me giving myself to the Lord. But if you sit here tonight and just say, you know what, Lord, I, I just can't see myself being used. You are missing. You've allowed yourself to come to a conclusion that's not based on Bible truth. Jeremiah 33 says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Now, as I kind of turn the corner on this message and you're doing well tonight, you know, number one, you've got to understand this, this matter tonight of this conduit, your mind is an open door. Your mind is a conduit. Number two, there's a real conflict, can I say here? Number two, there's a conflict with the fantasies. And by the way, there's an illustration I didn't even use, but if you can imagine tonight if you had a can of soda, and boy, if you open up that can of soda, do you know that that mind would never be the same, or that can would never be the same again? That's how impressionable, of course, our minds and our fantasies uh, that they are. But I want to give you the last really important principle tonight. It's how you and I can have victory tonight. Are you interested tonight to know how you can, you know, have victory? There, there must be a constraining of our fantasies. Now, I want you to look at, or maybe you don't have this, but look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the last part of verse number 5. I think it may be on the screen up here. But it's the constraining of our fantasies. This is what's leading us to, can I say, reality. Paul says this in the latter part of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10. He says in verse 5, And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me read that again. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, there are two things I have underneath this here tonight. Number one, there must be, get this, an acknowledgement of truth. You know the very thing, if you want to, can I say, ever experience reality and live the victorious Christian life, you have to live in the realm of truth. I've met, I've met many people who just live a life of just not wanting to live in truth. Everything is just kind of make-believe. But young person tonight, you know, when you think about this, th there, there must be this acknowledgement of the Word of God. The only way that you're going to deepen your faith and, and things are going to ever remain real to you, there has to be time spent in the Word of God. Uh, Ephesians 6 verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins good about, with truth. And yet the way that you do so is with the word of God. And, you know, not only reading the word of God, you know, there must be this internalization of the word of God. 
Can I ask this question tonight? You don't have to at all answer it out loud. But young person tonight, let me ask you this question. What kind of relationship do we have with this book right here? You know, one preacher once said this, is that, you know what, we are as close to God as that we want to be. And young person tonight, you're as close as to being in this book as you want to be tonight. And this is not just some, this is not an academic book. When I was in high school, I went to public school, and it's amazing when I walk down the corridor of our high school, it's amazing to see all the, the textbooks just kind of laying on the ground and just being mistreated. And young person tonight, this book is not a textbook. I mean, this is the word of God. This is a, a life book. And so there must be the acknowledgement of truth, but, you know, obviously that leads to the application of truth. Now, listen to this. You're not, what you're going to be most accountable for, I believe, at the end of your life is the things that you have heard. You know, I'm going to be accountable for a whole lot. And yet, uh, with that accountability, it's, it's the application. How much are we applying ourselves to this book right here? I just say this very quickly, you know, this matter of applying the word of God. Some of you don't know the name, some of the adults, and I'm almost finished with this here. Dave Dravecki, he was a, a pitcher for the San Francisco Giants back in the 80s. And he also played with the Montreal, I think it was um, uh, versus the Montreal Expos. I'll never forget this game. I saw it on live TV. And Dave Dravecki, uh, born-again Christian, I'll never forget watching on TV. He was winding up for this pitch. And, I mean, as soon as he went into this pitch formation, he threw this ball. And this ball just went, I mean, it just went to the opposite. I mean, just it was crazy. I'm thinking, what in the world has happened? I, I'll never forget this. And as soon as Dave Dravecki pitches this ball, he falls down on the ground, and he's holding his, his left arm. And you can tell something had happened. I'm thinking, wow, what happened to him? Did somebody hit him? But sure enough, as soon as he pitched this ball, he just he went down to the pitcher's mound, just kind of holding on to his arm, and he's rolling around on this ground. And come to find out, you know, after this interview and throughout the whole situation, Dave Dravecki was actually diagnosed with cancer that he had in his arm. And sure enough, what saved his life was that he had to have that arm amputated. And he was interviewed uh, by Barbara Walters on 2020 years ago, uh, you know, uh, just a few years following this incident. And one of the most unique things about this whole situation is that after he had his arm amputated, Dave would say in this interview that literally he would wake up in the middle of the night clutching his arm, thinking that his arm is there. He had what was called phantom limb in his mind. He was believing that actually that his arm was there, and he was reliving that pain all over, and yet he had no arm that was there. But he had to believe, and I guess she asked the most obvious question, well, Dave, what, what did you do to kind of deal with this? And he didn't say medication. He said, you know what, Barbara, I have to believe. I have to believe that my arm is not there. In other words, he had to really put this mind into action. There had to be a little bit of faith here for him. And young person, I just say this tonight, that, you know, this matter of mind, your mind, and being a gateway, and, and of course, fantasies, and all of this, can I say that by faith, you and I must, you know, not only, of course, be applying biblical principles, but we're going to have to, can I say that this thing must become a gateway. I mean, we have to have a gate, gatekeeper with this gateway of our mind. I use this final analogy, and I'm going to quickly just kind of transition we're going to bow for prayer here but i know this morning um last night i spoke at a church and um uh, the very uh, church that i got saved out of was not too far away it wasn't the same church but i took some time to see a little bit of monterey and then uh i drove on what was called old fort ord military base still there um uh, it's it's annexed now but i'll never forget when i drove on that base this morning uh i mean i had no problems getting on i mean all in fact as i drove around that base i mean anybody could get on that base but as I think back when I was in elementary age, um, when I was on base there, uh, we were stationed there for three years. My dad was military. You couldn't get on that base without showing a military ID or at least having a military decal. I mean, it was hard to get on that base. They'd have those guards there. They would have, you know, of course, M16s and uh, just ready to go. You could not get on that base without having the proper clearance. I'm a little bit of concern tonight young people, that we've allowed a lot of enemy get inside of this tonight that's got inside the gateway through your television, through your music, through your fantasizing, maybe sensuality. The list goes on and on. And young person tonight, I just say this very simply, you'll never grow spiritual if you and I don't ever get to a place where we just let the Lord have first place. And it, it all starts with this book. And so I say this in closing, in just a moment here, we're going to have just an invitation, and not, this is never a time to embarrass anybody, 
But I believe that, you know, with preaching, it's an opportunity for us to respond. It's an opportunity for us to get things right. Don't leave the way that you came. Does that make sense there? I mean, if you know that you've got areas that need to get fixed, let's fix those. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight, all right? No one looking. You've done so well. I know this type of message may be a little bit different. But young person, I believe it's very apropos where we, where we live. And just so I know who I'm speaking to tonight, and I don't ever want to, uh, you know, take it, uh, you know, underestimate this here. But how many would say, uh, Brother Williams, and I know that you've probably used this phrase before, you know, Christian is saved. But how many would say, just with an upraised hand, with no one looking around, please, with heads bowed and eyes are closed, please, so you don't have to look around. But how many would say tonight that, you know, Brother Williams, I know for sure that if I took my last breath tonight, if I died tonight, I know for sure heaven's my home. I know that I'd go to heaven. Can you slip a hand up there nice and high? Raise it up. I know for sure. I'm absolutely sure heaven's my home. Amen. Amen. You can put those hands down. Now, I see some hands that were not raised. I'm not sure if that was just because of maybe not knowing for sure or maybe not responding. But is there any young person that would, that's here tonight that would say, you know, Brother Williams, you know, if I, if I did die tonight, I wouldn't go to heaven. I don't have a relationship with Christ. And young person, not to embarrass you, but if that is you, instead of raising your hand, can you just look at me? Nobody else is looking around. Look right at me if you would there. Amen, amen. Young man, amen. I appreciate your honesty. Would you like to know for sure heaven's your home? Would you like to know that for sure? Anyone else at all would like to join this young man? What I'm going to get you to do, nobody's looking around, but can I get you? I need to send him out. Can somebody help him? He wants to know how to trust Christ. Why don't you stand to your feet if you would there. Anybody else at all? If you don't know Christ as your Savior there, why don't you go ahead and go right back with Brother Tom. Why don't you take him to the back? Anyone else at all? I don't know Christ as my Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord for this. How is, that's encouraging. Anyone else at all? I'm not sure that heaven's my home. Anyone else at all? Would you like to get that settled tonight? Let me ask the last question here, and this is why kind of the crux of the message. But you know, again, kind of a unique message, different message. But you know, young person tonight, your imagination, your fantasies are a great deal to the Lord. And some of you have allowed your fantasies to take you down a direction that you have no business going in. How many would say tonight, you know, the Lord spoke to me. I've been fantasizing. I've been worrying. It's been sensuality. It's been self-promotion. I don't know where the Lord spoke to you, but how many would say the Lord, you know, he spoke to me in an area tonight. I need to get some things right. Anyone else? Could you slip a hand up? Amen. Amen. I see those hands. Good. Anyone else? Anyone else at all? I tell you what I do. I don't want to embarrass anyone at all, but I tell you what, let's all stand if you would. And I tell you, if you raised a hand, why don't you just do business right there with the Lord? You can maybe even stay seated, okay? Uh, if I can maybe put you with somebody to pray with you, I want to be a help to you. But why don't you, before you leave tonight, um, I'm going to turn this over to Brother Tahir. Maybe we can even take a moment just to pray for these decisions that were made, and then I'll have you to close tonight here, all right? So heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Brother Tahir, I'll let you come and close. But let's give him an